Now we're going to take a chance to deploy this EC2 server that, that we already did by hand and use a tool called Terraform. Um, before we get started, I want to mention a little bit about infrastructure as code and, and the whole idea. Um, the, the idea here really is that rather than you know having a bunch of people who've clicked around and did different settings and chose different instances, you, you'd, you'd quickly end up with a, just a mess of instances and configurations that are, that are all um, you know, hand edited and, and difficult to manage. Um, so you know, for example, um, you know, I, at work at MS Mutual, we have over 300 instances on our, uh, on I think just our QA EC2. Um, so there's there's lots of different services we're running, and uh, it would be really hard to keep track of if we didn't use um, infrastructure as code or a more automated way to deploy and test our, our whole infrastructure. Um, so let's get started. We're going to use a tool called Terraform, um, and so I have a guide up here from Terraform that we're going to follow along with, um, and it's their AWS guide. So the idea behind Terraform is that we can we can write down what our code looks like. We're going to write a code, write a bit that looks a lot like this, um, and and then uh, we can deploy to any provider we want. So this is deploying to AWS, but you could also deploy the same services to a different provider like Azure or Google Cloud or even just a, a Docker registry service. Um, so um, it's going to allow us to have a consistent deployment and uh, and really, really manage what we do. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so for the first step, um, I'm going to I'm going to follow through creating a manual one and we'll, we'll build out our automatic profile, um, our Terraform template. Um, so I'm going to open up the, the Terraform template here. I've already started it out. Um, so I've got a bunch of different files here already. Um, you can see there's actually four Terraform files. Um, I've split up different services we're going to create. So um, let's start with our main one. Um, so this is where we're going to create the AWS instance. So this is going to be our EC2 instance. Um, here, right, we're going to specify the AMI ID, the instance type. Um, we're going to list out the private subnets. Um, here there are three that I've listed out. We're going to give it the key pair, number of EC2 instances. You know, we could deploy 100 if we want, just like just as easily as we could deploy one um, like this. And uh, and the security groups, these are actually hard-coded, so you can see kind of how you can go back and forth between hard-coding and providing things with variables. Um, here, right, we've got a big a big disk. Uh, maybe we'll actually turn that down to 8. I think that's what we're going to see later. Um, and we can go ahead and specify any tags we want. So this is going to be our base EC2. Um, right on top of that, we've also specified our provider. So here we're going to be using AWS. Um, so top right, AWS, we're going to put it in the east zone. Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, and here we go. So we're going to use our, our Route 53 primary zone. So we're also going to create that that uh, demo dot that we created before, um, and that's going to be hosted over in the DNS here. So you can see we're going to create demo .aws. So um, we could call it uh, the we could use the name that we're going to create to to specify this as a variable. Um, but anyway, right? This is going to be our primary zone. Um, so that's going to be that aws.anydreagon.com. We're going to create this, and it's going to actually point it to our EC2 automatically. So we don't have to specify the IP. It's actually going to uh, pull it out here, um, AWS instance.demo. That's going to be uh, right here. It's going to be this demo instance. Um, and I think I gave it a stack ID. So stack ID, I was just going to call it demo. Um, so if we want, right, we can give it the, the same stack ID as the URL. Um, we, could, we could do something. Uh, like this. Um, yeah, and we could also do it here. Um, I'm going to leave this as is um, hard coded for now because I just want to save your time on things breaking. I think this one is, is close to working. Um, so here we go. Um, this is, uh, okay, the last file we didn't look at for Terraform is this uh, vars file. So this is all the variables that we're going to supply. Generally, uh, you'd want to keep these type of things private. Um, so your VPC ID, um, the instance ID, th these are all variables that, that we can supply. So here, this is dev. Um, we could have a QA and a prod if we wanted to uh, follow that release cycle. Um, here, right, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is dev. This variable is going to control, if we go look at main, right, I think we can see that, yeah, it's going to go ahead and set set dev as the environment tag on, on, the, uh, on the instance. Um, we know that the primary zone was aws.andyreagon.com. We know the key pair we used was demo-key pair. Um, and we're gonna, we'll pull out the, the subnets and stuff as we go and create it. Um, I think, yeah, we'll pull some of this out, but we'll do it to micro, et cetera. So let's go ahead and, and create one. Um, let's go ahead and just go, go through the create. So let's go to instances and we'll just go to launch. 
Okay, uh, so I think before we were working with Ubuntu, um, so let's go ahead and grab that AMI ID. Um, so here's the x86 architecture AMI ID. Um, whoops, uh, so that's the AMI. That's the first thing we'll select. Um, so we'll go there. Okay, t2.micro, I think I already wrote that down. We want a t2.micro, cool. Um, we want one of them. Uh, good, good, good. And so we'll go next. Um, so the VPC, right? Uh, we only had one listed here. Um, oh, it's not going to let me copy this out. I'll grab it from the main page. Um, so this is our VPC. Um, we could specify which subnet we want. Um, here, um, right, we could specify private subnet, um, right? But we're going to use the we're going to use the default subnet. So here, right, I've got these three variables. Let's go ahead and delete this. We don't want a private subnet. Um, and let's just not give it a subnet ID. We're just going to use the default here. Um, okay. We can also remove these from our variables. It will tell us that they are missing. Um, let's get rid of these. Okay. Um, we're going to use uh, public subnet. Cool, cool, cool. Um, storage rate. I think I did turn this down. We want you know something like eight gigs. Um, so I think that was hard coded here. Yep, eight gigs. Uh, GP two. Yep, that's what we got. Um, next. Um, tags, right? I didn't add any tags, but we, we did do a bunch. Here, I'm going to want to grab um, uh, grab the security group. So let's give it that web access security group. Um, so here, we'll hard code that security group into the main. Probably should use a variable for this. Um, I'll give that as a, as a to do. And uh, let's go back. What do we still need to find? So we still need to find our VPC. Good, good, good. Um, so let's review it. We're not actually going to launch it. Let's select a security group. Um, Yeah, so so let's see, we give it, uh, oh, we want to give it the public web server, yep, so that we get, I can actually SSH to it. It is open to the web, yep, um, here's all our details, here's our security group, instance details, let's log in. Here's our VPC, so we can just grab it from here. Um, and that's it, uh, so this is, this, is our, this is our configuration. Um, we're good to go. So now we're going to try to actually launch this using Terraform from the command line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back here and not launch this. I'll go to EC2 and we can watch for a new micro instance being launched. Um, we'll keep a lookout for that. Um, so we're going to go here uh, to the guide, building infrastructure, right? They have an AWS account, AWS CLI. Um, I've already gone ahead and downloaded my um, the CLI and I have an AWS account. I was just logged in. You can grab your credentials. Um, there's a link to how to do it on this page, and to do it, you drop down and go, uh, my security credentials are not going to go there because you would see them, um, but uh, with that, so let's go ahead and, and configure AWS. Um, so I've actually set these uh, parameters in the uh, in the environment, so it's going to pull them out with the automatic environment names. Um, so I've configured AWS, we're good to go. Um, we have a directory, we have some example files, we, we've got a little more built out already, um, and we can check that our provider uh, for Terraform looks like this. So let's go to our provider. Here's our AWS provider. We're doing uh, US East 1. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yep, and this looks good. Um, that's the region. Yeah, maybe let's go ahead and give it uh, the default default profile. Insecure, true, I don't like I don't like the sound of that. Um, so let's leave that off. And here, right, this is actually their example instance. So we specified that in a different file. So we specified that over in main um, as, our, as our resource. Um, and we can go and specify uh, this for Terraform as well. Um, one thing that we did get rid of here as well is these, uh, the default zones we would use. OK, so this looks good. good. Um, this is not a private zone, actually. OK, let's give it a shot. So this is our instance. Um, Terraform can actually uh, make these files look a little bit nicer. If you want to read through this, yeah, you can look at you know splitting these up and using different options. Um, and let's go ahead and get running. Let's make sure that we have Terraform working. So terraform-help. That looks good. Um, and let's go ahead and init. So it's going to have to get the AWS client. Sweet, it did. Uh, it gave us a few warnings. Uh, 
on our interpolation. We don't need quotes on a few of these. Um, yeah, so we could just do no quotes. It's fine. Um, and let's go back here. We ran it. Um, so we can tell it to format for us. This is kind of nice. It gives them that nice block layout. Um, and I want to see if it can also format our environment file. All.tf and variable files are updated. So maybe if we change our .env, we can do cool. Um, and that'll give us a nice, a nice format. It'll look like all spaced out. Let's take a look. Yeah, look like this. A um, little easier to read, maybe. Oh, we didn't give it a stack ID, right? I want to call it demo, um, right? So cool. And yeah, we're in the right directory. Um, so we can go ahead and check that everything looks good. And then we're going to go ahead and actually run this. Good. OK, a few string deprecations. Um, let's go ahead and apply it. Um, so this is going to go ahead and connect to AWS and actually build out our infrastructure. <laughs> uh, it's going to ask me manually for all those values, right? But I can actually pass a var file. Um, dot n. Uh, what was our file called? dev.tfrs. dev.tfrs. There we go. We see some of its lock files going around. Using credentials to get account ID. Security token included with request is not valid. So I've refreshed my AWS keys, and I think things are, are going to be working. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to our HashiCorp um, demo here. And they ran Terraform Apply. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run uh, Terraform Plan. Um, that's going to tell us what Terraform will do. I'm surprised they didn't uh, give that as the, as the first option. Um, but I'm going to run plan first, and it's going to tell it's going to access AWS, see what's there, and see what it would need to do. Um, so here's here's the plan. Um, so it's going to go ahead and create each of these. So it's going to create our demo instance, uh, zero being the first one. It'll know all these settings after. Give it these tags, um, and it's going to create a Route 53 record. Um, cool. So two to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. Um, so now. Uh, we can go ahead and swap up plan for apply, and let's let it work. This 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 may take a minute. Um, so, do you want to perform? Uh, yes, let's do it. Uh, I know sometimes it you know it takes a minute or so to create the uh, instance, and it's gonna have to it's gonna have to wait for the EC2 to come online so we can get the IP address, um, and then it will go fill in the IP address on on that route. Um, so we can see if we can go watch this in the console as well. Um, let's see. So only took 34 seconds to create that EC2, and then uh, another 37 seconds to create the domain record. And it looks like we're good. I haven't refreshed the page here, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, there we go. We got uh, demo dev EC2, right? It gave it a name. Um, and it looks like we're still going. It looks like I was still initializing the instance. Um, and things are online. It should have demo key pair, um, so we can go check this guy out. Um, once it once it comes online, right? We can again make sure that things are working. Um, so if we go here, oops, <laughs> minus i. Let's go downloads, and then I think demo key pair is what we told it to use. Let's log in as Ubuntu user and. Security, TCP, uh, we did not give it enough permission to SSH in. <laughs> OK, um, but it is there. It's online. Uh, let's also go check that our uh, Route 53 record got created. And let's go here, two hosted zones. And here we go. Here's the demo record. It's pointing to that IP, right? That's going to be 172. Well, it gives it a different name. 172.31.215. So, right, this is going to be the IP of the um, the IP of the server. So we can go double check that. Go back to EC2 and go check our instance. And let's double check that that is our IP. 
Hmm. That doesn't look right. Status checks are initializing. Public IP 34. Hmm. Well, we'll have to double check on that. So here we go. It says it is all up to date. Um, and we can double check that. Let's see. So for our DNS, <clears throat> use the, oh, so use the private IP. That's why. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to use the public IP. Um, so if you go to EC2, so uh, this is good. We can go ahead and edit our, our code here. Um, private. Yep, there it is. Um, so, right, let's go ahead and grab the public public IP. Um, cool. Give it a name. All right. That looks good. Any other changes we want to make? All of this looks okay. Oh, we need to give it one more security group, right? So we could we can create the other security group we need to give it. Um, pull that out and that'll be a working piece of infrastructure for us. So this is part of the show. We got um, we got the thing online and let's go ahead and um, get rid of it too. I think the command is destroy. Yes. Um, and that's gonna that's gonna get rid of that route. It's gonna turn the EC2 off for us. Um, so you can see this was easy to put it on left line. Now we can go and, and repeat the same configuration, right, with a new uh, with a new security group, um, etc. And uh, yeah, so this gets a server online, and there there's a handful of tools to go and do all the steps that that we already did to to put the stuff out there. Um, you could use um, Docker could be one of the components of it. Um, it's not the tool. You could use something like um, Ansible or I think Puppet is another one of these tools that will, you give it some instructions, it'll basically, you know, basically go run a shell script on the server um, to install the packages you need and uh, copy down the Git repos you need and get everything up and running on that server. Um, so that, that's how to get it out online. And now, right, we have a repeatable, a repeatable server um, that we can launch. Thanks for following along.